Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Tuk Tuk's Trinkets and Terrain. Winter is in full force where I live. The temperature is in single digits. There's ice and snow covering pretty much everything. Uh, and for this week's video, I wanted to uh, make a winter build because of that. Uh, and I used one of my favorite franchises, Star Wars, specifically uh, Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, as inspiration. Uh, I landed on making a set of uh, Wampa cave terrain. Um, and for me, there was four pieces of terrain that I wanted to make, sort of the four key uh, features uh, of the scene in question. That being the cave entrance, which admittedly you don't really see in the movie, uh, so I took some liberties with that. Um, the carcass that the wampa is eating in the movie, a place for a person to hang, uh, as well as the wampa itself, obviously. So I'm going to show you what I did and how I did it, and I hope you enjoy. So I started things off with the cave entrance. Uh, now, like I mentioned, there is not a lot of detail shown in the movie, so I kind of just tried to do my own thing here. So I've glued a bunch of XPS foam all together to make a big stack. And you can see I've sort of drawn out what my plan was. And then using my hot wire knife, I just shaped the general structure and gave it a little bit of texture on the sides there to create a sort of cliff face with the sort of hill along the backside. And then I used a heat gun and just gently melted basically the whole thing to smooth out all the edges, uh, make it a little more natural looking. The next thing I started was the archway where I was going to have a spot for minis to hang, uh, like their feet are frozen in ice. So I just glued a bunch of scrap XPS foam together. And then once again, just use my hot wire knife to shape it into a nice little archway. I then used a mini as a guideline to make sure that this uh, slot would be big enough and then just cut it out with the hot wire knife and then made a little spot for the legs to go in and then after fiddling with it for a little bit made sure it fit and we get a nice uh, upside down mini that can hang in there so the next piece was the carcass or skeleton uh, so i had this old triceratops skeleton toy laying around uh, i cut off the i guess fin on the back of the head as well as the horns to make it look less like a triceratops and more just a sort of random carcass. Trace that out onto a piece of foam and then cut that out. Uh, the idea here was to be able to sort of embed this in some ice and snow rather than just sitting on top. And then took that piece and beveled all the edges and glued it onto some chipboard as a base. Uh, and then used a bit of clay to sort of fill in all the gaps and extra areas. Again, just to make the skeleton seem like it's embedded in the ice and snow. Set that aside to cure. Uh, and then I coated everything with my black paint and Mod Podge mixture. But while I'm doing that, I just want to remind you to please hit the subscribe button. I post crafting videos every other Friday. Hit the like button if you are enjoying the video. Leave a comment with a suggestion on something that I could have done different or maybe a future project that you'd like to try and see me tackle. And share this with your friends if you think they'd enjoy it as well. And a little bit you do really helps and I do appreciate it. Now with the Mod Podge all dry, I moved on to my painting. Now if you've seen my snowman monster video, you'll know that I have a very exaggerated snow and ice painting style that I like to do. Uh, for me, it's just really quick, really easy. It saves me some time, um, and I think it looks good. Um, so I base coat everything with a blue metallic paint. But to break up the large uh, cave entrance piece, uh, I painted the sort of cliff side with just a dark gray base coat. Once that was all dry, I did a very heavy sort of overbrush with just a pure white. Uh, and that's basically it for the blue sections. Like I said, it's super simple, super quick. I don't go any further than this. Uh, but on the cliff side, uh, before doing the white, I do a dry brush with the metallic blue. There was still a little bit of white left on my brush, which is why it looks a little lighter. Uh, but once that's all down, I do one more final dry brush with the white again, just to break it up a little bit. And then to add some sort of ice features, uh, this is UV resin. Uh, so I just pour a bunch out onto some wax paper here and cure it with a UV light. And what this does is as it cures, it uh, sort of warps. Uh, you can see here with the smooth side and then the paper causes it to have this really nice texture on one side. So I made a couple of those as well as some long thin strands of resin to use as icicles a little bit later. 
These big pieces, I just use some scissors and cut into some chunks to get some jagged edge pieces. And then using some more UV resin, I just attach that sort of randomly across all my pieces uh, to add some ice features. And then to finish everything off, I mixed up a bunch of what I like to use for snow. Uh, this is uh, a roughly three to one mixture of baking soda and PVA glue with just a tiny amount of some ultra fine uh, glitter mixed in to add that sort of sparkle you get off of snow. And then I just kind of randomly put this down on the skeleton piece here. For the archway, I'm going to use those long strips of resin uh, after cutting them down and make some icicles that are hanging down. Again, just using the resin as sort of the glue to hold everything in place. Uh, I also attached some of those ice shards on top here as well. And then finished it off with some more of my snow paste. And then one last little detail, I painted up a little sword that I had in my bits box and glued it into the skeleton piece, just a little callback to the lightsaber stuck in the ice. And I do all those same steps for the cave entrance as well with the icicles on the entrance, the snow paste as well. Uh, but then to add some sort of fresh snow, I had this leftover styrofoam ball that I've used in a couple different projects, uh, but I cut that up and essentially ground it all together to make a really uh, fine uh, flocking basically. Uh, you can see here it ends up uh, looking pretty convincing. Uh, and then I just used a spray adhesive on this because the piece was so large, figured it would just be faster than applying like PVA glue or something like that. Sprinkled the snow all over everything and picked away some of the larger pieces that didn't get broken down and set that aside to dry. Now for the Wampa itself, I'm gonna use this Troll Slasher Mini um, as sort of the base, uh, but I didn't like how hunched over it was, so I chopped off his head and sort of smoothed out the area with a knife. I also gave him a bit of a haircut to make his head uh, smaller overall. I also removed the loincloth that the Mini had, then chopped the whole thing in half and repositioned it so it just had a little bit better posture and wasn't so hunched over. Just reattaching these with some super glue. And now to add the Wampa's horns, I have this Chaos Space Marine head that I chopped the horns off and super glued in place. And these aren't perfect Wampa horns, they don't curve outward like that normally, but it's close enough, gets the point across, so I was happy with it. And then glued the head back on Again, to straighten them out and make them a little bit taller. And then to add the fur that I mentioned, uh, I have some fake fur scraps left over from, I think, a costume project. Um, but I just used some scissors and trimmed off a bunch of the fur to, more, to a more manageable length. And then coated the entire mini with some PVA glue, uh, except for the places where there wasn't fur, like the toes, the fingers, the horns, and the face. And then just coated him with the fur. Uh, trying to make sure as much of it as possible sticks to get some uh, good sort of heavy coverage. Now he's looking a little wild right now after the glue has dried, uh, but to sort of tone it all down uh, as well as shape it, uh, this is um, a mixture of water, PVA glue, and white paint. Um, so using the paintbrush, this will just help me not only get rid of the excess fur, but shape the fur, lay it down a little bit, give him back some more... Uh, definition in his arms and legs and, and whatnot, while also adding the signature white color that the Wampa has. This also helps me get the fur away from the places where I didn't want it, uh, like I said, the horns and the fingers and, and whatnot. Once that was all dry, I trimmed off a bit of the extra uh, long bits that were hanging off, and then all that was left was to paint a few of the areas that were green from the mini. Um, now, to me, in the movie, it looks like the Wampa skin is actually black. Uh, which makes sense for an arctic creature. I know like polar bears in real life have black skin, but I thought that might be too heavy of a contrast. So I went with a dark gray. Uh, so I painted all of his toes, all of his fingers, uh, as well as the skin around the mouth and eyes, this dark gray. Uh, and then I went back in and painted his, uh, all of his uh, talons and like toenails in the black, as well as his eyes, just to make him stand out a little bit more. I also did a quick little dry brush on the horns in black to make them stand out a little bit uh, so that you can really see the uh, texture. I then wanted to add some blood around the mouth and on the hands. So this is just a red wash basically, a really thin down red paint. 
uh, just applying that where um, sort of made sense. Like he had just, like the Wampa had just uh, killed something fresh and was still, um, the blood was still so wet. Uh, and then to add some dirt and some grime, I just used my homemade pigment powders and just sort of dabbed at him, um, make him look a little, little more dirty, a little more, uh, I guess, worn than just the pure white fur. Sealed that in with some clear coat spray and he was all good to go. I am uh, very happy with how this little set of terrain turned out, uh, especially the Wampo. I think that really, I think my very easy, quick conversion turned out really, really well. And here's a little example of sort of an encounter that I had uh, thought of. Um, so here outside the cave entrance, the characters are fighting this Yeti or, or Wampa, depending on which game you're playing. Um, but at some point in the battle, a character gets captured or, or taken, uh, and the Wampa retreats into its cave, uh, and assuming that it's not going to be followed, it freezes the character upside down in its archway for later, um, and in here, maybe the final battle can take place. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to make. Um, I like using pop culture and, and franchises that I really enjoy as inspiration. I do have an Instagram account if you want to check that out. I post in progress pictures and other things that I've got going on. I also have an Etsy shop where you can pick up dungeon tiles and accessories, terrain, things like that. Links for both of those can be found in the description below. But more than anything, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll see you next time.